the dignitaries and it's a great pleasure to be standing amidst you. Uh, I've been given a very practical uh, topic. It's about tips and tricks towards diabetes remission. I think uh, my um, co-speakers have very well addressed about the problem of remission, the diets. I'll be trying to make my talk more crisp because there are multiple plethora of uh, dietary recommendations and all. I'll be trying to give you the gist of what I have got from my research and let's go ahead. So the roadmap for today would be I would be like to discuss regarding the latest update, the consensus statement for diabetes remission. How can we label a patient as a patient going into diabetes remission? What are the modalities available for us to label our patients, uh, you know, to help our patients go into remission? The evidences uh, for, uh, you know, diabetes remission. And uh, I would like to talk about a very important uh, kid in the block, the new kid in the block, talking about the diabetes remission aid for our patients through precision medicine. And then will be my concluding remarks. Uh, around... A decade ago, it was very well understood by, you know, multiple, uh, you know, scientific papers and research that diabetes is an irreversible, unavoidable condition that patients can never undergo cure. But after uh, the latest updates through the, uh, you know, twin cycle hypothesis that we got through direct trial, the counterbalance trial, the counterpoint trial, I'll be trying to, you know, go through all these trials in, in, a, in a jiffy. But the problem here is remission is possible, yes, now, but the issues that we are facing uh, are tormenting for us because it is, it is very important that to understand that diabetes is a heterogeneous condition. So the patient, what food he is exposed to, what kind of physical activity he does and to you know sum up, the problem of mental stress is at, uh, at, at the peak at this time. So that is why these three things have to be counterbalanced. And now as endocrinologists, we are also facing the problem of endocrine disruptors, the pesticides, the BPA, plastics, and all these things are, you know, perpetuating insulin resistance. And these things again, create a lot of problem and the peer pressure, the public health resources, availability for our patients. And uh, to add fuel to the fire is the genetic makeup of our, uh, of our Indian population that is thrifty, uh, uh, Indian population with less musculature and high fat. So uh, we got a breakthrough regarding uh, the diabetes remission ideology through the bariatric surgery, which proved to give us remission till the tune of for the tune of five years post surgery. And it was found out that most of the benefit is got through uh, you know the gut hormonal changes and the negative calorie balance. But through multiple studies, it was found out that DLP one, which was responsible. Uh, you know, the change in the GLP levels post bariatric surgery were not the only thing. The most important thing was the decrease in the caloric balance that the patients uh, had into consideration post their bariatric surgery. Coming into the latest consensus report, the most important criteria is if you have started an intervention for your patient, whether it is pharmacotherapy or any lifestyle management or any, uh, you know, metabolic surgery plan for that patient. Three months after that intervention, that intervention should not be going on and you see the patient's HbA1c which is less than 6.5%, then you can label the patient as, uh, uh, you know, a patient into diabetes remission. And it has been said that for pharmacotherapy and metabolic surgery, three months uh, before the intervention, you know, the intervention should have been done three months before uh, checking the HbA1c and for the lifestyle management, you can have uh, to, you can assess the HbA1c six months post the lifestyle management. Another important factor is in some conditions where you cannot consider HbA1c as a tool to uh, check the patient's uh, you know remission rate. You can also check the eHbA1c that we get through CGM or the fasting blood glucose levels, which should be less than 126. Another very important factor is once you label a patient into diabetes remission after one year also you should be annually checking their HbA1c to understand whether the patient is still into diabetes remission or not. What are multiple benefits while you are talking about diabetes remission? Obviously the patient would be you know now not into the label of being diseased 
that is a very important fact uh, very important factor again a uh, patient would get you know a reward factor that now i am looking better my reports are well i should maintain this again there are plethora of health benefits that sir has beautifully highlighted before me and the insurance schemes can be offered to the patient at lesser rate and uh, the occupational restrictions can be gone what are the modalities that we have the three best modalities available for our patients to go into remission are bariatric surgery lifestyle management and the uh, very important the pharmacotherapy the most important thing is lifestyle management over and above the pharmacotherapy or bariatric surgery is the crux if the patient is just being given pharmacotherapy or has just undergone bariatric surgery and does not follow any lifestyle uh, management uh, schedules then it's again a waste for us i'll be crisping through the the evidences that we have so the first evidence came from the bariatric surgery and uh, we know up to the tune of uh, you know 5 years the benefits were seen but uh, 63% patients could achieve remission uh, by 18 months time and we know the cvd benefits that we can get through bariatric surgery in typical comorbid Uh, conditions but the disadvantage we know uh, for the complications of the surgery talking about multiple diets i'm not going to get into detail of it i'll just be trying to give you the gist of the story but there are multiple trials who brought forward that calorie restriction so it's not about the amount of carb that you're giving the amount of fat you're giving the amount of protein you're giving what they've reduced is the amount of calorie restriction is very important and the formulation in which you are giving the calorie is very important so i think sir beautifully highlighted that slide which i also have that hypocaloric diet between 1000 to 1050 calories per day gave remission to the patients with formula feeds so it was very important that there was total meal replacement in addition to the you know patient specific uh, nutritional requirement that i'll be coming forward through were required to give remission to the patient so talking about multiple diets available but uh, through a very important diet structure we gave the breakthrough was the very le- very low caloric diet that was brought out to the direct trial so direct trial uh, was done by the uh, by the godfather uh, of uh, diabetes remission dr taylor he took 49 participants and what he did was he randomized them into either the intervention uh, arm or in the control arm and these were uh, people between 20 to 65 years their bmi was between 27 to 45 and the duration of diabetes very very important was less than 6 years so this was a structured program total diet replacement was them uh, the drugs were weaned off uh, they were not on uh, any kind of pharmacotherapy and they were just given the total diet replacement uh, for the 3 months and then they were followed up uh, after 3 months and the, the patient specific individualistically diet was planned for them and uh, for the next two months time the food reintroduction was done and after two years what was the thing that they understood as you can clearly see at year 1 45.6% patients achieved remission and 35.6% patients could sustain that remission what is the crux of the story if a patient achieves more than 10 kg weight loss and sustains it for the next two years then the probability of the patient going into remission would be around 64% so direct was uh, you know straight forward more than 10 per, uh, 10 kg weight loss for that matter if you are having a 15 kg weight loss you might get into remission the chance of remission would be to the tune of 70 to 80% that was quite uh, you know very impressive but how did that happen this is something which is very important as clinicians we have to understand what happens is what his uh, uh, you know what his uh, the what is the theory what is behind what is talking behind is that for a very sustained time if a patient is having positive calorie balance what happens is this excessive calorie load uh, the the liver is not able to you know metabolize that and there is a you know uh, there is the problem of uh, glucose intolerance for uh, for the at the level of liver and there is a uh, poor glucose uh, you know absorption and there is rather conversion into lipogenesis so that there is new lipogenesis and this carbohydrate is getting converted because of 
insulin resistance into increase vldl and triglyceride which because of insulin resistance at the level of liver uh, causes uh, accumulation of fat into the liver and this is the major problem that is uh, insulin resistance at the level of liver so there is uh, the spill over of this fat into the bloodstream and it reaches the pancreas and then there is accumulation of uh, these uh, tgs into the islet cells and the acute insulin secretion the first phase of insulin secretion gets drastically hampered and what they proposed was the benefit that they have got was through the negative calorie balance which you know reverse this whole process i'm not going to go into details again the counterpoint or the counterbalance study all of these gave the same highlights we also have one indian study very small group of patients of around of uh, uh, you know 12 people but this is something a practical diet which they proposed was around 1060 calories where 30 gram formula was given uh, with 150 ml of skimmed milk three times a day one proper meal was given and three snackings were given to these patients and even in this study you can find you could find out that these patients at the end of 3 months could achieve a uh, reduction in the weight could achieve reduction in their hba1c and achieve the remission and better insulin sensitivity the pro so the the basic structure is that if you reduce the calorie balance if you have a negative calorie balance and you sustain the weight loss for a long time then you have uh the better insulin sensitivity at the level of liver and pancreas and you can propose diabetes remission the problem with all the kinds of diet is the very low calorie diet is not sustainable that is a major issue that we all are facing even in our clinical practice so even if i want to do this particular diet i think i cannot sustain it for more than one or two months so is this reverse is the, is the diabetes uh that is why we're not labeling it now as diabetes reversal we are labeling it as diabetes remission another uh, important intervention after bariatric dietary modifications the third thing comes into factor is the early insulin intensification in particular group of patients with lower bmi and high visceral adiposity in the first 3 or 4 months of initiation of diagnosing diabetes also gave uh good results and good uh, propensity to you know have type 2 diabetes remission by improving the beta cell function another kid in the block which is a game changer for us was the glp1 analogs which had the beta cell salvaging benefits for us and that is why i think uh, there was a beautiful slide again that we have to have an upstream approach and not a downstream approach so we have to have a weight centric approach right in the beginning when a patient is coming to it coming to us rather than having a glucocentric approach for them this is again the benefits that uh, are that we are getting through uh, these molecules talking about the medical nutrition therapy so now let's come to some practical things in the last 7 or 8 minutes that i have got the basic thing is even if you are giving a hypocaloric diet it should have low carbohydrates that is a basic thing and saturated fat should be minimalistic uh again replacing it with with mufa pufa is again a game changing uh, aspect of introducing such diets and improving the insulin sensitivity so diabetic specific nutrition is something which we should aim for uh, and that is a very practical approach for our patients where we try to individualize patient's lifestyle we understand that as a patient is diabetic this patient if given a uh, simple carbs in the form of mono and disaccharides could have post uh, prandial glycemic fluctuations could have lot of glycemic variability and could cause beta cell fatigue so such patients should be given uh, starch based or complex carbohydrates in addition to fiber balance in addition to the proteins and very important micronutrients so now uh, i think uh, everyone very well acknowledges the increase in the pcod patients and we have been using insulin sensitizers in the form of chromium the form of selenium to in these patients and through uh, you know micronutrients improvement in their diet also adds uh, uh, you know aids us in improving their chances of diabetes remission another very important factor is whatever diet you want to propose to your patients the most important thing is balancing out everything and taking things in moderation so even now is mango season and uh, i am belong to surat and we have the uh, the mango ras the keri ras coming up and patients coming to up that i cannot have mangoes so 
so we tell them you can have mangoes but not in the form of the rust but you can have a whole mango reducing your other carbohydrates so fructose is again uh, you know it helps in glucose sensitivity when taken after the food which prevents glycemic fluctuations and such tips in diabetic patients can help in preventing their glycemic fluctuations in long run so i think everybody's well aware with these uh, healthy eating patterns this is what i was trying to highlight the diabetic specific nutrition giving them slow digested slowly digested carbohydrates uh, giving them a timely mufa and pufa replacement and very important uh, using pre uh, prebiotics and dietary fiber is the key to maintaining uh, our patients healthy lifestyle for a sustenance what why are we not uh, talking about keto diet or you know the all the different kinds of fat diets so the problem is here now it is very much accessible to us that we can see body composition analysis of every patient before initiating them on uh, on different pharmacotherapy that we wish to or lifestyle changes with these fat diets which patient does not undergo any body composition analysis so if this patient is already sarcopenic and we know most of the patients that we see are having lot of sarcopenia and visceral adipose so if they go into these crash diets they will lose further their lean musculature and losing these lean musculature actually increases the uh, insulin resistance at the river of muscles and further decreases their metabolism and further propitiates again the cycle of weight gain so further uh, you know the patients they have you know fast weight loss but again they have the fast gain bound because of that and again the problem of dehydration the fatigue all these things the nausea the headaches and the mental trauma not able to have food is something which is tormenting so uh, moderation and balancing things is the way ahead uh, again every patient is unique you have to consider patient's lifestyle you have to consider patient's age the gender uh the patient's uh, you know body composition the patient uh, lifestyle changes which are required based on the exercise protocols you need to tell these patients is something important uh the support of family is a never ending which will be required and if a patient is sustaining weight loss as doctors we should be pushing them further rather than not decreasing you know our motivation for them by telling them no you are good enough in these circumstances patients also feel that they have achieved what they have got and it's it's a human mentality that we start becoming lax so we have to be also pushing them right ahead that they should be continuing and taking the proper eating strategy this is what sir highlighted uh so again this is again very important what point of time are we initiating uh, the strategy uh, the strategy uh, strategies for diabetes remission as you can clearly see the calorie restricted uh, weight reduction protocol should be at any stage of uh, bmi but typically in patients with 30 to 40 we have now liraglutide sglt2 inhibitors in addition to metformin which give us the highlight to be using right in the beginning rather than giving them the sulfonylurea or the pioglitazone which are the main uh, you know uh, ideal candidates for achieving remission so where you can have good remission rates for your uh, patients those patients who are ideally having diabetes less than 6 years the most important thing what they found out even after counterpoint counterbalance direct trials uh, level ahead trial multiple trials is that wh what was the lax even if 15 kg weight loss was achieved still 100% remission was not there so it was seen that those patients who were uh, you know having diabetes duration more than 6 years 8 years 11 years 12 years the chances of diabetes remission is still vague so earlier you intervene earlier would be the chance so diabetic duration is very important men because they are more muscular and the metabolism is different they have higher propensity to become to go into remission those patients who have a combination of diabetes typically have higher chances patients who are having hba1c between 6.5 to 8.5 can benefit further and those patients who are not on multiple insulin therapies are great candidate so basal bolus so trying to wean them off is not going to be a great choice for them again if this patient is not uh, you know obese patient uh, on basal bolus that's a different story so not to try diabetic remission in these patients type 1 diabetic patients pregnant very elderly patients uh, very sarcopenic patients patients on multiple insulin regimes patients having hypoglycemic unawareness all these patients should not be uh, targeted for diabetes remission so these are the three most important things the total body fat composition where this fat is distributed the ectopic fat distribution 
and we can beautifully see through the MRIs and the uh, you know MRI scans the reduction in the fat in their in the liver as well as the pancreas which helps us in targeting for a better reduction this will be my last two slides if you can allow me please this is the latest update for uh, you know for our, for us also that uh, a digital twin technology has come into perspective uh, where we understand a patient's metabolism so the patient's sleep cycle is studied the patient's eating patterns are studied the patient's breathing is analyzed the patient's stress is analyzed how well he sleeps what time he eats where how is the insulin sensitivity at what time of the day based on that a digital twin is created and different uh, you know uh, modifications are advised to them and uh, after one year of uh, you know analysis so it takes one year they give different sensors the cgm the uh, you know different sensors for analyzing the sleep uh, the patient's food inputs are put on and they create uh, you know micro level uh, you know conductions for what indication what uh, different uh, things have to be done for these patients and even in ada 2022 the uh, the article was published and things were uh, going their way and so we are also waiting to use it in our clinical practice and i think it's a great go last two to three points from my side would be remission uh, is not uh, is not uh, that it's not it's not going to be that unlikable thing for our patients but sustaining the weight uh, loss for our patients is very important maintaining that lifestyle for a long go of around 5 to 10 years would make our patients into maybe the you know uh, a prob uh, into probability of post diabetic phase so now it's not that the patient of diabetes is going into pre diabetes after his uh, his sugars are normal now they now we call it post diabetes and again the most important thing would be early screening and active early treatment so early screening would be a way ahead and early intervening in these patients would be a great go so what if remission is not achieved shoot for the moon and even if you miss you land up on the stars so you should not put down your efforts for your patients thank you